Hi there everyone, it's me again, your instructor Sir Paul. Welcome to our second lesson in discovering the concepts, principles, and nature of agricultural economics. To begin, this would be our topic for today. So we have agricultural production economics. We will also be tackling problems in agriculture of an economic nature and then we will discuss agricultural policy recommendation in the Philippines. Once again, hello everyone. Welcome to this discussion. To begin, let's uh, review first what is really agricultural economics is. And uh, it is a study of allocation, distribution, and utilization of resources used along with the commodities produced by farming. Also, agricultural economics really plays an important role in economics for development and for continuous level of farm supplies is one of the wellspring of technological and commercial growth. Now, in general, we can say that a large fraction of country's population really depends on agriculture for its livelihood. However, we cannot deny that the average income are low when one engaged in farming. Now, we will be discussing about agricultural production economics. Now, it's very concerned uh, primarily with economic theory as it relates to the producer of agricultural commodities. Now, some of the major concerns in agricultural production economics include the following. So, we will be discussing about goals and objective of the farm manager. Second, the choice of outputs to be produced and also allocation of resources among outputs. Fourth one is the assumption of risk and uncertainty. And lastly, we will be discussing about the competitive economic environment in which the farm firms operates. To start, um, the goals and objective of the farm manager. Simply, this is to provide guidance to individual farmers in using their resources most efficiently. Second, is to facilitate the most efficient use of the resources from the standpoint of the economy. In this, agriculture production economics really involves analysis of production, relationships, and principles of rational decisions mm -hmm. in order to optimize the use of the farm resources on individual farms and to rationalize the use of inputs from nation's point of view. Then the primary interest is applying economic logic to solve problems that may occur in agriculture. So this is basically the goal of a farm manager. It could either be someone a graduate from this course or from other allied courses such as also business administration um, of a related agriculture course. The second concern of agricultural production economics is choice of outputs to be produced. A farm manager faces an area of options with regard to what to produce given available land, labor, machinery, and equipment. Now, the manager must not only decide how much of each particular commodities to be produced, but also how available resources are allocated among alternative commodities. For example, the owner of the farm may decide to grow a particular crop on a certain number of acres of land. However, in ideal farming, one must engage in growing a variety of crops for the farm household to be sustainable. That is why uh, there is a need for a proper selection of what to produce after careful evaluation and inventory of the current resources. And uh, this is the very first step for an economist to identify. Then one must also forecast based on the previous cropping information, especially from cost of production, operation, and maintenance, so that we would know what would be the favorable crops to be produced on a particular cropping season. Next, the third one is allocation of resources among outputs. Now, the amount of labor machinery on each farm, we know that that is very limited. Now, labor, machinery, and time must be properly allocated to each scrap and livestock activity in order to produce such commodity inconsistent with farmers' overall objective. 
The fourth concern of agricultural production economics is assumption of risk and uncertainty. Economists have often made a simplifying assumption that production takes place instantaneously. You know, its input are upon acquisition immediately and magically transform into output. However, it's not the case in agriculture because production would take time. The transformation of agricultural produce uh, can take even several months and it can even take years to produce crops and livestock. For example, uh, fattening a calf or cow from the moment it is conceived and the moment it is ready to be sold for meat on the market, it would really take time. Then another factor that needs to be considered uh, would be uncertainty, like conditions uh, pertaining to weather and climate are very uncertain. That is why it is very imperative for us to learn the concept and knowledge uh, pertaining to farm management and farming system to prevent unprecedented circumstances such as drought and biological disease. The last concern for agricultural production economics is the competitive economic environment in which the farm firm operates. For example, economists of inside farming as the closest real world example of a traditional model of pure competition. But the competitive environment under which a farmer operates depends heavily on the particular commodity to be produced. Since agriculture is considered to have pure competitive environment, then we need to revisit the assumption of pure competition, in which there should be a large number of buyers and sellers in the industry. Second, the firm can sell as much as it wants on a market price, and no single firm is large enough to influence the price for the commodity being produced. Third, uh, the product is homogeneous. Fourth, there is a free exit and entry and thus free mobility of resources exists both in and out of farming. Lastly, all variables of concern to the producer and consumers are known with certainty. We also need to discuss the problems in agriculture of an economic nature. Now we will be discussing the market failure, the low income for farmers, third, the environmental cost of intensive farming, fourth is positive externalities of farming, uh, fifth would be monopsony, and lastly, we have government failure. Number one problem is market failure. From the study of M. Ricardo et al. 2008, markets fail when exchanges between willing buyers and sellers are impeded and efficiency is compromised. Now, overcoming such market failure is a role for the government, but devising a solution that improves upon the status quo may not always be possible. Another problem of market failure is the volatility of prices and supply. Now, the diagram you are seeing shows that an abundant harvest leads to an increase in supply, and this leads to a significant fall of prices, as you can see there, 350 to 200 US dollar. Another problem in agriculture is low income for farmers. Now, food has a low income elasticity of demand. Whenever price increase, then we spend much more on technological advances or we spend more on inelastic products like uh, luxury goods, for example, gadgets and cars. Now, for developing economy, their current comparative advantage may lie in producing primary products. However, this may have a low income elasticity of demand. With global growth, the demand for agriculture products doesn't increase as much as manufacturing products. Therefore, relying on agriculture can lead to lower rates of economic growth. Another problem is environmental costs of intensive farming. Uh, modern technology has enabled increased in crop yields, 
making our harvest abundant and uh, however this often requires chemical fertilizer and uh, artificial uh, or conventional way of farming method now as farming becomes more competitive there is a greater pressure to produce more leading to an increased use of artificial chemicals However, artificial fertilizer and chemicals have diminishing returns because in the long run, it will become expensive and with little benefit and it has greater environmental cost. Now, many farming methods even led us to deforestation and cutting down trees. And this really upset the ecobalance of our region, making our environment more susceptible to flooding as what had happened in Baguio and some parts of the country. And uh, there is a greater danger for our future generation if we will not going to mitigate problems as this. Next would be positive externalities of farming, wherein you could argue that farming community uh, plays an integral role in the rural life. If farmers will go out of business and it has adverse consequences for not just the rural communities but uh, the industry and the whole economy itself because as what we have learned the relationship from agriculture to the manufacturing industry and service is interrelated and interconnected. Another problem is monopsony. For example, a supermarket can have monopsony buying power over local farmers and this means farmers may see their profit margins squeezed. Now this problem is very evident now. For example, the production of sugar. Wherein milling corporation or milling companies have purchasing power over local um, sugar cane farmers and this may squeeze their income or profit because if they won't sell, then this will put our farmers on a difficult situation. And most of the time, our farmers have left with no choice but to sell it at a lower price. Now, it is a sad reality. That is why your role is to help our agricultural sector to have a sustainable future for all, especially to alleviate and mitigate problems of farmers in, in this type of scenario. Lastly is government failure. Now this occur when the government intervention in the economy causes an inefficient allocation of resources and a decline in economic welfare. Often government failure arises from an attempt to solve market failure. However, this creates a different set of problems. Now, these are the reason why government fail. Number one, lack of incentives, wherein workers and managers lack incentives to improve their services, and this lead to inefficiency. Unlike the private sectors, they are being driven with incentives. That is why they're very efficient with their output and works. Other reason as well is poor information, wherein politicians we elected to their offices are not expert in the department they belong. Sometimes they only concentrate on their political ideology that doesn't favor everyone in the society. Another government failure is political interference, wherein decisions made for short-term political gain only, rather than sound economic long-term decisions. For example, keeping unproductive workers because of bad relations. Another example is that politicians may take the short-term views rather than considering the long-term effect. Another one is no consistency because we are changing government every six years. We open, uh, this often led to change of approach and new political initiatives are to be created. Next is moral hazard. The government may offer a guarantee to all bank deposit to protect the financial system, but this could encourage bank to take risk because they know they can be bailed 
out by the government. Another one is regulatory capture. When the government agencies become too friendly with business or groups, they are trying to regulate unintended consequences. And uh, other programs as well, such as uh, Poor Peace, it created dependency and that is why it is very ineffective. For those in the Poor Peace program, most of the parents would spend the money on unnecessary things rather than on the educational needs of their children then most if not all will no longer work because they become dependent on the program but good thing with those few who utilizes the program to its intended purpose there are various things the government can try and do to overcome government failure number one give performance target and profit incentives number two competitive tendering wherein there should be competition between the public sector and the private sector for the right to run the public service. Third, employ outside private sector consultants to make decisions about how to cut costs. Number four, delegating certain decisions to non-political bodies. For example, setting interest rates was given to Central Bank of the Philippines. Last topic is agricultural policy recommendation in the Philippines. Now, first thing is to improve agricultural policy performance to enhance the sector's long-term productivity. This is intended to refocus the policy packets to improve food security. It also includes refocus agrarian land policy from land distribution to securing uh, property rights through land governance reform. It also need to focus budgetary support on a long-term structural reform and then reorient agricultural knowledge system. Number two is reorient the focus of agricultural education and extension services to improve farm management. In this, uh, we need to adopt a holistic approach to risk management with a policy focus on catastrophic risk and then we need to assess insurance and cash transfer schemes that can encourage adaptive decisions. Thirdly, we need to improve agricultural sector's capacity to adapt to climate change. In regards to this, we need to make climate adaptation policy objectives consistent across programs and institutions. We also need to develop clear guidance on climate adaptation tagging and make sure that new infrastructure projects are climate proof. And then we need to provide reliable climate information to farmers and encourage more efficient use of water. Fourth would be improve agricultural institution and governance system. This is the last um, agricultural policy recommendation in the Philippines. Now, in line to this, we need to strengthen institutional coordination between the DA and other relevant departments and institutions that implement programs supporting agriculture. We also need to strengthen transparency and accountability of public funded programs and then accelerate efforts to build a solid policy relevant statistical system and embed monitoring and evaluation mechanism into the policy process. And uh, that would be our discussion for today. And uh, these would be the references from our discussion. And I hope everyone learned something out from this. You take care and God bless.